SpaceX Dragon spacecraft one more time has made headlines for what it has recently done to the ISS. It's never done before. Yeah, on November 8th, the ISS went a just tiny bit faster, after receiving an orbital boost from Dragon, marking an important advancement in the spacecraft's operational capabilities. This test truly has brought Dragon to a new level, where it is tasked by NASA as a means to maintain international cooperation since then serving the bolder ambitions of the national agency in the future. Find out everything in today's episode. The International Space Station may have six more years to go before it gets deorbited by a monster dragon. In June, NASA announced a contract worth up to $843 million that they awarded SpaceX to develop a vehicle to deorbit the ISS. The deorbit vehicle will be based on Dragon, which transports crew and cargo to the ISS. Indeed, the Dragon spacecraft will be outfitted with a new trunk section that can carry additional propellant, as well as engines, avionics, and new ways of power generation, specifically fit for the task of deorbiting the space station. This one-off craft will be larger than a standard Dragon and have six times the propellant and four times the thruster power. The thrust maneuver has to be strong enough to bring the spacecraft into an elliptical orbit or an oval-shaped path so that it's properly captured by the atmosphere. This will ensure a controlled descent through the atmosphere so that the remaining fragments of the space station end up in a remote area of the Pacific Ocean. To develop a such vehicle, both NASA and SpaceX conducted a planned ISS reboost using a Dragon spacecraft that had docked at the ISS to collect the needed data. The test took place on November 8th, and on November 4th, SpaceX launched a Cargo Dragon spacecraft for the company's 31st commercial resupply services mission for NASA. In addition to carrying over 6,000 pounds or roughly 2721 kilograms of scientific investigations and cargo launched to the ISS, Dragon, while on the station, did reboost the ISS for the first time ever as the company prepares to eventually kill the orbiting complex. The reboost began with the ignition of Dragon's thrusters around 12.50 p.m. ET. The burn was expected to last about 12.5 minutes to raise the station's orbit. The test is the first step in planning the careful destruction of the space station and time for SpaceX to prove that it's got what it takes. By the way, the test also serves for ISS's altitude control. You know, as any human object in space, the ISS needs to be periodically reboosted to compensate for atmospheric drag and maintain the correct altitude. Traditionally, Russian Soyuz spacecraft have fulfilled that reboost capability, but things are changing rapidly. Russia remains a partner in the ISS after its unsanctioned invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Even though most other international space agreements ruptured, the ISS is a policy project and cannot operate as independent bits, NASA has emphasized. In 2018, Northrop Grumman also did a reboost test using Cygnus, but it was not until 2022, as Russia was threatening to invade Ukraine and questions arose about Russia's commitment to the ISS, that NASA started using it operationally. Cygnus's reboost capabilities are quite limited compared to Progress and Zvezda, however and Russia continues to conduct the vast majority of reboost operations. And Cargo Dragon is not exceptional, but for Bill Spech, NASA ISS Operations Integration Manager, this is an important flight test objective for this mission, as we continue to increase the capabilities of all the vehicles on ISS. What's clear is that selecting SpaceX for this mission is NASA's clever decision. The $843 million contract value appears to fit within the expectations NASA set for the program. According to plans for the U.S. deorbit vehicle, USDV, in March 2023, the agency came up with an internal cost estimate a little bit short of about $1 billion, but hoped that the industry could offer a lower price. Although that deorbiting is scheduled for around 2030, it would be possible if NASA and the ISS partners elected to extend the station's life beyond the planned 2030 retirement. That will happen if there are no commercial LEO destinations ready to support NASA's ongoing needs in LEO by 2030. 
By then, the USDV can dwell on the ground while awaiting a final deorbit decision, and the procurement to store the vehicle until the mid-30s is also under NASA's responsibility. NASA and the other Western partners on the ISS, Canada, Europe, and Japan, have all agreed to operate the ISS until 2030. Russia, the other partner, has agreed to only 2028, which NASA officials previously stated is linked to the Russian space agency Roscosmos operating in four-year increments when planning the station's future, in this case from 2024 to 2028. NASA has been supporting the development of commercial stations, which the agency calls Commercial Low Earth Orbit Destinations, or CLDs, with the goal of having one or more such stations in orbit and certified for use by NASA astronauts by the late 2020s. That would enable a transition from the ISS to the commercial facilities by 2030, followed by deorbiting the ISS. Not only lower cost, Dragon stands out by its reliability, keeping up with NASA's requirements. It will be a new spacecraft design or modification to an existing spacecraft that must function on its first flight and have sufficient redundancy and anomaly recovery capability to continue the critical deorbit burn. As you know, the Cargo Dragon spacecraft conducted 31 commercial resupply missions to the ISS so far, demonstrating its high safety. It's the reason why NASA can trust that the deorbit vehicle that is designed on the current Dragon is capable of performing its mission objectives successfully on its inaugural flight. Furthermore, SpaceX has also to ensure that its brand new vehicle has backup systems in place for critical components, such as propulsion, avionics, and control surfaces. For example, if one engine fails during launch or landing, Having additional engines can ensure that the spacecraft can still complete its mission safely. A typical example is the Starship's case, given that the rocket is designed with multiple Raptor engines. Even if one fails, others can maintain thrust. The ability to recover from anomalies, unexpected events that could disrupt normal operations, is also the company's advantage. This capability includes not only having redundant systems, but also incorporating advanced software algorithms that can manage and mitigate issues in real time. For instance, SpaceX's approach to Starship includes sophisticated software for switching landing engines and controlling thrust vectoring in case of engine malfunctions. So, at this point, have you ever wondered how will NASA go about bringing down a massive structure like the ISS by a spacecraft? even at the station's current orbital height of some 400 kilometers above Earth's surface. It still experiences drag from our planet's atmosphere as it orbits. According to the agency's current plan, when it's time to come down, the station's natural orbital decay will be enhanced by controlled maneuvers to further lower its altitude. Once the final crews depart the ISS, NASA plans to allow the station's orbit to further decay over 12 to 18 months. Then, a final deorbit will be facilitated by a modified version of the highly successful SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. The deorbit Dragon vehicle will use 46 Draco thrusters to perform several propellant burns to shift the orbit ever lower, as well as undertake a final burn to precipitate the ultimate descent of the station. As the station descends through the atmosphere, it will undergo intense heating due to friction with air molecules. This will cause the station to break apart and largely burn up. Many parts of the ISS will simply be consumed by the fire of re-entry, while a few of the larger and more durable sections, such as the trusses that hold the station together, will likely survive the final plunge to impact the ocean and sink to the seafloor. SpaceX plans to have the deorbit vehicle completed by 2028 and NASA plans for the final deorbit event to occur in 2031. In conclusion, it's so great to see that SpaceX has been contributing its scientific achievements and innovations to serving humans' dreams. That is not just manifested in NASA's USDV. Let's take a look at Starship. Designed with the mission of transporting large amounts of cargo and people to the Red Planet with the goal of colonizing Mars, the vehicle has undergone five tests in two years and is on track for its sixth testing scheduled on November 18th. The testing will mark a new milestone for Starship on the path of being fully reusable. The flight will have a similar profile to Flight 5, 
including a suborbital flight to the Indian Ocean and a super-heavy capture attempt using the chopsticks. However, the focus will be shifted to some extent to the ship to test the other components, such as flaps, heat shield, and the ability of an in-space burn of a single Raptor engine, demonstrating the deorbiting capability of Starship. The flight is planned to take place at a time of day such that the ship re-entry will occur in daylight for better visual observations. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.